All right, people, welcome back more Daily Duels. So today uh, we are doing the deck profile for Cosmos because Cosmos are off Daily Duels and we will be joined by DDDs on Wednesday. So we're literally exchanging one very aggressive, heavy OTK deck for another, which is totally fine, it's totally fine. I definitely think that Cosmos are much easier to use than DDDs and uh, we have some training to do when it comes to DDDs. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and take off Cosmos off of Daily Duels. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you my Cosmo deck, deck profile, give you my opinions on all the cards and plays and stuff like that. And then we will be moving on from Cosmos. Of course, Cosmos will be on back on the poll for January. So if they get me more new cards and uh, you guys want to go ahead and see the return of Cosmos on Daily Duels, you guys go for it on the polls and it will be back. So I don't think this is the end of the Cosmos support, you know, uh, especially one of the hints is that it's not over is because one, we do not have, you know, the the level 10, I believe this is level 9, yeah, this is level 9, but we don't have the level 10, I definitely think they're going to take it up to level 10, uh, we don't have the Death Star, you know, I don't know too much about the Star Wars, but we don't have the Death Star, and another card, if you see right here, look at that arm, look at that arm on that Cosmojo, that's obviously uh, the Darth Vader, uh, and we don't have a Yoda either, you know, and we don't have a Yoda, uh, we don't have a Cowardly Lion, from Wizard of Oz, so you know there's still uh, some cards missing when it comes to uh, both the Wizard of N, uh, Wizard of Wizard of N, the Wizard of Oz side, and the Star Wars side. So I definitely think uh, that more cards will be coming. So like I said, if you guys want to see uh, more Cosmos uh, for our, the, the second half of January to the early half of February, and the next poll from the January poll, then uh, be sure to uh, vote for it. So anyway, let's go ahead and go over the profile, and uh, yeah. So of course, three Dark Destroyers, you know, if you can afford them, you play them. There's no, there's no if and buts about it. Dark Destroyer is uh, arguably the best monster in the deck, you know, it's the it's the card that took the deck to the whole nether level. I mean, Forerunner is nice and all, but Dark Destroyer, I mean, being able to go ahead and special summon pop a monster, including itself, so, you know, if you want to, you can go ahead and summon it, pop itself, and then summon a Forerunner or summon whatever, it's just great. 3000 beater, it can't be targeted by your opponent's card effects, and then just floats down the ladder, it's just so good, like, this card, I, it's understandable being a secret rare how it's just hundreds and hundreds of dollars because it's so good. It makes the deck uh, just take it to a whole nother level. Like if you're not running uh, Dark Destroyer in your Cosmos, you're not playing Cosmos. It's just that simple. So uh, definitely three Dark Destroyer is just really great. Uh, three, four, and two. You know, it's just another floater beater. You know, you already had a, a, a bad enough time trying to deal with my 3,000 monster that can't be targeted. How about some uh, 2,800 that can't be targeted? Uh, the occasional 1,000 life point gain is pretty good as well. Uh, it's helping me on occasions, but you know I really don't rely on it too much. You know I totally don't mind paying life points as long as I win the duel. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you win at 100 life points or 8,000 life points. It doesn't matter. A win is a win. So. Uh, you know, it's just nice to go ahead and gain that thousand life points during my standby phase to, uh, you know, have more life points to pay since it seems like the majority of the cards in this deck want me to pay some freaking life points. So, yeah, so definitely 3 4 runner as well. And then, of course, it floats down uh, to level 6 lower, but I don't run any level 6s because I don't think they're worth it. I don't like Dogfighter, nor do I like, uh, I don't know, I forgot the other name. See? I forgot the other name because that's how much I don't like them. <laughs> so uh, we're just gonna move on to number f uh, the level five monster, and you know I would rather run three slip rider than even one of the level six monsters. I just don't feel like they're worth it. They're just they're not that good. So slip rider from a special summon, normal summon or special summon, pop back row. Who doesn't like to pop back row, right? You know you know raise your hand if you don't like to put pop back row. Put your hand down, all right? So, popping back row is just like ugh, it's like one of the greatest feelings in you. You just be like. Pop that. All right, now I'm gonna go off with my play. So, uh, Slip Rider, you know, 23 beater. Uh, it can be targeted by card effects on like you know the two bigger ships, but just totally fine, totally fine. But uh, still, you know, uh, three Slip Rider popping that back row, no complaints there. And uh, one of uh, Dark Eclipser. So I'm actually incorporating some of the uh, TCG exclusive Cosmo cards from uh, Breakers Meta. So I already discussed this. I already did a discussion talking about. Uh, what I thought about the new Cosmo Card Reveal, and I even discussed what my ratio would be. I was going to go ahead and play one Dark Eclipse to go ahead and have synergy with definitely the three Tin Cans and, of course, the three Cosmojos. So, I do not think that this card uh, can even compare to Dark Destroyer. It's, yeah, it's eh. Uh, once again, it's another big shift, 3000 beater that can't be targeted. Uh, but during either player's turn, when a trap card is activated, I can banish a Cosmo Monster from the graveyard, taking the activation if I do destroy it. 
And you're probably thinking, wow, that's really great, you know, being able to go ahead and just banish cause monsters in the graveyard to go ahead and uh, negate traps seems like really great. See, the problem is, is that uh, the way that cosmos currently are, they don't get a lot of monsters in the graveyard. You know, if a monster, if a cosmos on a monster ends up in your graveyard and stays in your graveyard, you messed up somewhere or some, something bad happened. Like, it's never a good thing when one of your cosmos monsters is in the graveyard. Ever. Ever. You know, because... Of course, these monsters are gonna, when they're destroyed and sent to graveyard, you can go ahead and banish them to float to another lower cosmos monster, so you always want to do that. And these monsters, if something happens to them, like for example, if I summon and, and there's a torrental coming after me, I can go ahead and banish them and get them out of the way to uh, summon uh, my bigger ship. So, you know, nine times out of ten, uh, you're gonna, these are gonna be banished and these should be banished. You know, unless, you know, one of these gets summoned and your opponent has a torrental and you don't have to something to tag out to or majority of the time what happens is you know I'm playing OCG TCG I get that farm girl in I paid that 500 I activate my effect they notice me you know so of course when they notice me I'm dead I'm going to the graveyard and farm girl is in that graveyard it's stuck and it sucks it sucks you know there's not a lot of there's no like no cards in here that's been like hey you know go ahead and get that banished cosmic monster and, and I mean in your graveyard and do something with it like nine times out of ten is going to be stuck so, uh, Dark Eclipse, especially, like I said, especially with the Tin Can and the Cosmojo, uh, I'm not running it just for the chance of getting noticed, but, you know, if that time or that situation comes, then, you know, and Farm Girl is in the graveyard, right? and I can just go ahead and summon the Dark Eclipse and get a trap, banish her, and then get her back with uh, uh, Cosmic Town. So, like I said, just, it's just enough. I wouldn't run no more. No more than one. You know, it's, it's even debatable if you want to run it. And then, it's in fact, even worse uh, than Dark Destroyer uh, Floating Effect. Its card is... Uh, Destroy a battle by card effect since the graveyard, you can banish it from the graveyard. Not to float down to Dark Destroy. If you floated down to Dark Destroy, then yeah, we would totally run more of this. No. Uh, you can add one add one level 8 or lower cosmic monster from your deck to your hand. So you don't even float. So yeah. If, if it if it totally floated down, then yeah, we'd, we'd be running three three of this. Yeah. Because I'm going to summon uh, Dark Eclipse for 3,000 beta that can't be targeted. Oh, you killed it? Alright, I'm going to summon Dark Destroyer now. This is another 3,000 beta that can't be targeted. I'm going to pop him off there. Oh, you got rid of that? Alright, you deal with this 2,800 beta that can't be targeted. Like, I float all the way down. But since it doesn't float, it's just, it's not worth the time. It's not worth the time. Alright, multiple of that three. Alright, so, as you can clearly see, we have a nice balance. So, we have 10 spaceships, and then we have 10 pilots to keep things nice and even. So, of course, we're running three Wicked Witch, uh, 1,900 beta that... Once per turn, during either player's turn, pay a thousand light points. This turn, this card can't be destroyed battle or by card effects, period. It's just so good to be able to just, as shit hits the fan, be able to just summon uh, Wicked Witch and then just hold on for dear life, you know? Just hold out this turn and get to the next turn. Uh, 1900 beater uh, increases your chance for pushing this for them OTKs, FTKs, and like I said, she's another psychic and she's another pilot, able to uh, banish herself this budget, summon a level 5 or higher Cosmo monster uh, from your hand. So drop, uh, jump in her spaceship and get going. And of course, we are running a uh, three farm girl. Used to be uh, the center of the deck, and still probably one of the best uh, uh, Cosmo monsters. Just uh, how good she is. Just being able to, uh, when she inflicts battle damage, you go ahead and pay 500 life points to add a Cosmo card. Cosmo card doesn't matter if it's your Cosmo Town, a Cosmo monster, or your Cosmo Joe. Add a Cosmo card. So uh, farm girl so good. She uh, leads to them powerful OTKs, and uh, she at some points is the center of the deck. And uh, before all this new support, she really was. So now she's not. You can kind of step away from her. You were running cards like Honest and Jerry Gito just to make sure that she won them battles and uh, got that damage in. But now, you don't need as much. So, uh, definitely third time, girl. Uh, three, Tin Can. Yes, death. Tin Can is exactly what Cosmo needed. Uh, despite everything and how good they are, they're still a little bit inconsistent. So, uh, this card totally helps with that. So, uh, once per turn, during the end phase, you can go ahead and pay... Uh, 500 life points to reveal three Cosmo cards with different names from your uh, deck, and your opponent randomly picks one, and you add it to your hand, you send the rest to the graveyard. Uh, this card's actually pretty good with Emergency Teleport. You know, if you want to go aggressive with Emergency Teleport, go, for, you know, some of Farm Girl go in. But if you want to take it slow, you can go ahead and summon the Tin Can. Then during the end phase, you go ahead and reveal the three Cosmo cards and, you know, do all of them plays. And, you know, like I said, you reveal three Cosmo cards with different names, generally three monsters. Your opponent will give you one. It's a level 1 psychic monster that banishes the summon up to level 2, so whatever you, you, you reveal and you add that one Cosmo monster, Tin Can can go into it, so that's totally fine. The other two are going to go to the graveyard, which is fine, because then that goes ahead and fuels Dark Eclipse, so Dark Eclipse can go ahead and clean up Tin Can's mess, 
banish them, get them back with Cosmo Count. So it's just that simple. So, you know, the synergy with Dr. Stru I mean, Dr. Klepser, Tin Can, and Cosmo Drill. I think that's literally enough. There are other Cosmo monsters that you could run, but I don't think that you need to go up to that level of synergy. So definitely Tin Can, great. You should run it. You should run it at three, because just getting that consistency, getting them Cosmo monsters to your hand. It doesn't even matter if your opponent randomly picks one, because when it comes to Tin Can, you want all of them. You want all of them. And then, uh, you know, just like with the one Dr. Clutcher, you know, one stuff, I'm running one Strawman. Uh, Strawman has his niches, you know. He has his situations where he's good, he has his situations where he's not so good. So, I really can't justify running more of him. You know, you can always go ahead and get him back with, uh, with, uh, Cosmo Town. So, you pay 500 life points and you target one of your banished Cosmo Monsters and Special Summon it. It's actually negated. Uh, also, it's destroyed during the end phase. So, simply, you gotta banish Dark Destroyer, you know. You can go ahead and summon Strawman, pay the eight, you know, 500, summon Dark Destroyer. You're not going to be using the effect that you're still a 3,000 beater. Uh, then you can go ahead and banish Strawman, get another one of the ships or anybody higher, uh, get it in. And then during the end phase, uh, yeah, the Dark Destroyer will be destroyed, but then, of course, you're going to go ahead and float down the ladder. So, because that Strawman has his niches, he's good in some situations, not so good in the other. I would definitely say run one. And that's really all you need, especially when Tin Can, you know. Right now, without Tin Can, I see a couple of decks running two, but, you know, as soon as Tin Can comes out, drop him down to one, put this to three. That's a given. Alright, and so, nice, perfectly even half of the deck, 20 monsters, no complaints. Alright, moving on. Of course, three Cosmo Talons is what makes the deck uh, so good and floaty and just awesome. You know, it literally covers your trap. It covers your butt, so you run this. It can be searchable through Farm Girl, and uh, most of the time, you want to go ahead, if you get that in, you want to go ahead and search out the Cosmo Talons, because Cosmo Town will keep it going. Uh, period, when this card is uh, destroyed uh, by a card effect, and you can go ahead and add a Cosmo Town. Uh, I mean, add a Cosmo card from your deck to your hand, including Cosmo Town itself, so it's not even a card that your opponent even wants to MST because you're just going to get another one, so uh, it's just a great card being able to go ahead and um, kind of pseudo mulligan in your hand, reveal any number of Cosmo monsters in your hand, shuffle them back, redraw, and uh, being able to uh, target one of your banished Cosmo monsters, return it to your hand, uh, and then you can take damage equal to us all, which is totally fine, totally fine, because you can go ahead and just, you know, summon one of your pilots, banish them on the ship, Cosmo Town, give me my pilot back, and then rinse and repeat, so. Uh, you used to run like terraforming and stuff like that, but you don't really need to do ooh anymore. You know, because there's enough and you've got other cards to play. So uh, you don't need to go to the extreme running terraforming to get to Cosmo Town, but you know, you definitely should run three. Emergency teleport. Uh, you got some psychics right here. Some of that farm girl more adaptive plays, some of that tin can more defensive plays, or some more setup y plays, and then some of that strongman. So uh, it's, it's, these two are so good that it's definitely worth the three emergency teleports. Uh, of course, for Geki, go ahead and wipe the field. Per Push for that FTK OTK limb removal. These guys are machines, so you know I'm gonna go ahead and double their attack. You're gonna get that damage in. They're destroyed during the end phase. All right, that's fine because they're gonna fill in anyway. So definitely limb removal is good. Uh, definitely my opinion better than honest because you know we're starting to incorporate some dark, like dark, dark, dark. So the deck is starting to get a little bit dark. Honest won't even do anything. Oh, I'll go up to a thousand. So. Uh, you know, I decided to go ahead and take out on it, take out the Jogitos, and then, you know, focus on more of this engine instead of running cards like that, you know. And without these cards, yeah, sure, you can run the Honest and stuff like that if you didn't have these cards. But nothing these cards are in, uh, they just have more synergy with the deck and creating their own engine and, uh, pseudo plays that Jogito and Honest can't even provide to you, so, yeah. Two Dark Holes, like I said, I don't care. My monsters float, and if I can go ahead and destroy your crap and push for the, uh, FTK, OTK, then more power to me. Uh, three Forbidden Lands. Uh, like I said, I was debating on which cards to keep, Honest or Jagita. I decided to go with Lance. I decided to go with Lance. The reason why that is uh, because Lance is great offensively, defensively, one of my favorite cards. Uh, spell cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Cooked by Spell Card. Uh, not only be able to block me from spells and traps, so if I get fucked up, like, you know, I summon a farm girl, they have one back row set, you know, and no monsters, and they think that they're going to protect by that one back row, I, you know, come after you with that farm girl, you feed the chain me, now I'm going to go ahead and block with Lance, so, you know, not only, I mean, yeah, sure, I can go ahead and hop out the way with, with farm girl, but I'm not going to get it in, so, you know, I'm going to go ahead and Lance my farm girl, she's going to get it in, I'm pay the life points, get my search on, and continue my plays, and it's pretending that you didn't play that background against me, but also, I really like it, uh, because, you know, my opponent, I can use it during the damage step on my opponent, make them lose 800 attack. So pretty much increasing my odds of fun girl getting it in from just, you know, 14 or lower, I get that battle damage in, to what, uh, as long as the monster is 22 or lower. Because, you know, I pretty much, like, I'm pseudo-gaining, uh, 
800 attack, so pretty much making form go uh, 23 in that retrospect. So, you know, if anything, if 20, 2200 or lower and I land it, I'm gonna get it in, I'm gonna get that battle damage in, I'm, I'm gonna pay my points to get the surf. So, uh, I decided to go with lands over Honest, which, of course, like I said, there's some darks in here, so that's bad, and Verikita, which is a niche, because uh, you see an extra deck here, but I don't think the, the, the whole entire time that Cosmos has been on a uh, Deadly Duels, I don't think I touched this extra deck, not even once. And I've seen a ton of Cosmo decks where you know, you don't even touch the extra deck. They don't even run an extra deck, so uh, you, you really don't need one, but it's nice just to have your toolbox. I'm not going to go in detail about stuff in the extra deck. You can clearly see they're just, you know, situational niche stuff that, you know, if the situation arises, go ahead and do it. But if not, then no. So, uh, that's it for the spell cards, trap cards, vanities, wins games, parental, more destruction, uh, bottomless. Uh, sometimes, uh, right, I say competitively, bottomless is kind of a niche card. Uh, that you really don't want to use, like I said, it depends on the deck. Uh, if you're going against Cosmos, if you're going against the Mirror Match, you kind of hit a big trip, that's pretty good, because, of course, you destroy the monster, yeah, but then it gets banished, and, you know, these monsters, they have to go to the Graveyard, then banish themselves to get the effect, that's good. But then you go against, like, uh, Magic Specters, and it's just like, yeah, that's not going to work. So, uh, Monomus has been up and down, it's debatable on whether it's good or not. Uh, if I was just full on competitive scene, I would say no, it's not good. Uh, you know, uh, it's kind of decent against Kaka Pee Pee Poo Poo, but no, I would say don't run the bottomless. Run, run more floodgates, run more hate, run something that can get all three, but not just you know nitpick. The same thing with like destruction. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend running Rickeki. I wouldn't recommend running Dark Hole. I wouldn't recommend running Turtle in the competitive meta. All right, so all warning, great. Yeah, definitely run warning. Warning is, is, you know, warning and vanities are the two best trap cards in the game right now. Like, and you know, givenly so. You know, just being able to go like, all right, you go ahead and pin summon all the monsters. Nah, no, I'll pay two thousand to stop you, and you all go to the graveyard. But like, no. And then of course, uh, the three Cosmo go. Uh, at first, I was kind of eh about this, but then I realized that this card is actually really good. So being able to go ahead and target a Cosmo monster, destroy it. You know, if the ships they float. If the small ones, that's fine. They're gonna go to the graveyard, and I'm gonna be able to banish them with Dark Eclipse or later. So that's fine. You know, if the situation arises. Hopefully, it doesn't get to that point. But if if need be, I got it. Uh, then I can go ahead and. Uh, Ban if I do, banish one card my opponent controls on the graveyard. Doesn't target banishing, so I'm not destroying. Uh, and whether it be, you know, opponent, uh, opponent controls, so whether it be, you know, mirror match, banish that cover monster, you're not floating, or, you know, banish a magic specter monster, I don't have to worry about you anymore. Um, or just banishing your grave. So let me go ahead and just banish that, uh, that damage juggler. Yeah, so just a really great card. You find it one Cosmo. Cosmo per turn doesn't matter because that that's this place is so good. A non-targeting banishing card from either your opponent controls or in the graveyard. And uh, if I get a ship, the ship's gonna float. So you know, if even if it's just all right, I'm pushing for the OTK. You know, farm girl, get it in. Uh, you know, dark destroyer, pop something, tack dark destroyer. All right. Uh, you used to run like a, a generation ship to go ahead and continue during the battle phase. There you go. Cosmo dope. Cosmo dope. Destroy your dark destroyer. Uh, banish a card. Um, your opponent controls are in the graveyard. Dark Star, go ahead and summon Forerunner and, you know, continue getting it in. So, you know, you can just go Farm Girl, that's 15. Farm Girl, go ahead and search for Wicked Witch. Search summon Wicked Witch, that's 19, so that's 34. Uh, Wicked Witch, go ahead and summon Dark Destroyer. Dark Destroyer, uh, go ahead and get it in, so, uh, that's 64. Cosmojo, pop the Dark Destroyer, banish a card, summon Forerunner, tag game. So, uh, definitely, uh, Cosmojo just adds more to the synergy, adds more to the plays, adds more to the FDKs, the consistency, the defense, like, this card's good. This card's good, this card's good. And just to make sure that these two, uh, have some, uh, synergy and use with the monsters that may be put in the graveyard, go ahead and run one of that. So, uh, there you go, people. There is the Cosmo deck. So if you guys want to re-vote on it for, uh, the January, uh, uh, straw poll, then you know, more power to you. If not, then that's fine. You know, we've had plenty of fun with Cosmos here. Uh, they're the only deck to uh, carry over from my break, my pretty much two much two month break uh, from my channel, and I've had fun for, with it for the last uh, month or so. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all support. And yeah, I will see you guys uh, using DVDs if uh, you haven't seen that already. And more deck profiles for the rest of the week. Alright, people. Thanks for watching.